All right, so it's time for a little bit of an update on the Merc. So I've done quite a lot of work off camera, um, as I'll show you now. So I took the windscreen out. I did. I was going to film it, but to be honest with you, I just started and basically cracked on till it was done. Now, what I'd assume was the case is clearly it. The windscreen was never taken out, as you can see on there, when it was last painted and restored. So we've got the old um, paintwork there, and there's a there's a obviously the line up against where it is. There's also quite a lot of corrosion running round as well. So I've took all the chrome strips off, all the way round. Dashboard's out now, so I've took all the, the timber off the top of the dash. There's a little screw in the glove box there. I'll show you the dash in a second. Um, windscreen came out really easy. Fortunately, this car it has a chrome chrome strip that runs around the outside, and as soon as that was out, there was plenty of space. Now I'll just show you the other side because I need to rest it back into position. But pretty rotten there. I don't think it's going to go through. But obviously with the position of it on the car being quite structural, I'm going to give it a proper rub down and make sure it's all right. Now, along this edge here is pretty bad as well. That may want a piece in there, I think. So I'll dig out and put a load of rush treatment in, see how that is. Dashboard for some reason, it's got a dent there. Some Something's obviously happened. It's awkward to get the dash out. All the chrome trim is out from this side. I've taken out the brake and clutch pedal. It now starts on the key as well, dead easy. All the leather's off from there. I do need to remove this top piece of leather. It's all perished and there's bits falling out from it. So that needs to come out. And then across the top, again, once all rubbing back, rush treating, priming and painting with the rest of it. Now, to give you an idea, shut these. These are all the bits here from it, so get this this is the like the binnacle the surround so pretty pretty rough shape what my intention is is to rub it absolutely flat with um, obviously with sandpaper if I can get the veneer off it I'm going to take the veneer off and um, then I've bought some relatively flexible real teak veneer so I'm going to do a small piece with that veneer it on see how it goes and hopefully get that glued on lacquered and see what the finish is like all the dials and everything are here my wheel surrounds are there I've got well basically I've made these shells in the corner of the garage just to store all the bits all right, so I've done a little bit more in the engine bay as well. So if we come round here, I've stripped off, uh, where is it? This valve, put it through the ultrasonic cleaner. This is like the, the distributor to the heater matrix. I've got the hoses as well. So I'm gonna be running a hose pipe that goes from there, which is like the, the inlet feed down to the air filter that's on the uh, injection pump, the mechanical injection pump. And then we've got a pipe to go from here into the, I think that's a, like the wax capsule for it as well. And then carries on from there, that goes into that valve there and then from there to the heater matrix. So I think I'm gonna get on with that now, I'll get them in. And then I've bought a pressure test so I can do a check 
from here and we'll build the pressure up in the system now what i didn't realize is i mean for a 1963 car i was wondering why it had two feeds for the heater matrix but it's actually got dual heater controls so you can control each side independently from the looks of it. Right, so I've got my hose on there. This one's on here. And then them two are done. I'm now filling it with water. It's going to take a load. The radiator is massive. But we'll see if we've got any leaks. I'm imagining something's going to go wrong. I have tried it with the the pressure gauge and it is building a bit of pressure up but it's it's a bit more difficult than I thought to make work so I'm just going to fill it with water the worst that can happen is a few gallons of water on the floor apologies about the noise of the pond outside uh, got quite a significant amount of water in there but it keeps dropping down so what I'm going to do is just start it up quickly and let the water just circulate for a second and then we'll just give it another blast I'll show you how easily it starts so this is going to be the first start now with the vacuum hose here connected up to the air filter that's just sat in there on the injection pump so hopefully it's going to be as easy as I think cold start still not on well that shouldn't matter I'll show you the oil pressure gauge and everything so ignition he says one of the spark plugs but we'll see if we've yeah we've dropped the water level down massively I have a feeling one of these has been knocked it sounded like it was missing a bit that one there probably give it another go now in fact I'll just put a bit more water in and we'll try it again I think we've definitely got an overfueling problem Looking at the colour coming out of the, the garage and it absolutely reeks. But let's give it a, a go now. It's better. Oh, not just not idling quite right. I have a feeling we just need to let a bit more air in. So on this here. I, I think it's not letting enough in and that connects round to which one is it at the back there I think it's that let's get it started up again Make sure the fuel's on. It might be out of fuel, you know. Ah. I think we're out of fuel. So I left it quite low. I can hear the fuel pump, but nothing's circulating, so we're running out of fuel. Let me top it up. Alright, it's just started coming around now after filling up the tank so let's 
let's give it another go. Fairly sure that that's what the problem's going to be. The only thing I'm a bit worried about now is the injection pump isn't going to be primed. But we'll see. Definitely sucking air in somewhere. Sure it is. Yeah, I've got a fuel leak there. Let's get that cleared up. See where we we'll, can't even tell where that's gonna be leaking from. But it's just dripping down onto the exhaust. So it's a good job we spotted that. Fire extinguishers are there. Let's get that ready, just in case. Don't want to take any risks. So we'll get ready with the powder. All right, so this, this one here, just wanted a little nip up, I think. That's one I bled it from, I mustn't have just turned it up quite enough so I'll just give that a wipe off and then I'll start up again and we'll see what it's like. Water level is okay. Um, I undid that by accident before and a little bit of water came out so that's looking okay so let's clean that up and start it again. We'll start it again now. It's all clean, definitely. No time for anything to be Water level just pretty good, so I'll pop it up a little bit in a minute. No, I thought we'd put my hands
I'm gonna have to put something on the exhaust to get it out the out the garage. That's a little bit too much that in it. But we're full of water. I mean it's I think it's 15 for March today. Um, luckily I've got heating in the garage so I don't need to worry about antifreeze. Got no drips. I just would like to have tried to get it hot enough for the heaters. Yeah, it just would have been nice to try and get it hot enough, you know, to get the heaters on. Make sure that we're running around the matrix and everything. Um, but, I mean, it's night anyway now. It's an insulated garage. None of the neighbours can hear it or anything, but the, um, the fumes are killing me. I'm gonna to have to leave this open. I think for a while to play that. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll put my paint extractor on as well. And we'll put the uh, the fan on as well down here. Oh, that's better. So I've got a fan. That's my compressor there. And I've got a cooling fan for that, which sucks air from outside. You can see it's clearing it already now. Might fire it up again. Alright, so I knew it was too good to be true. Got a little tiny puddle here on the passenger footwell and some signs of, of water dripping from the matrix it looks like so I have to do a little bit of an investigation on that it'd be nice if it was just a rubber hose but I have a feeling that's unlikely so I think that's going to have to be one of the next jobs it's just a mess of wires down here All right, so I'm gonna call it a night on the boat now. I'm not sure if the next video is gonna be on this or on my Toyota, because I've ordered, um, well, in fact, I had delivered today a new shrinker stretcher. So I'm gonna start doing a bit of fabrication work, hopefully, on the back wheel arches of that. And I've also bought a little baby English wheel to try and get some shape. So I'm not too sure. I might carry on on this though. So it's either going to be a video on this, video on that. The Corsa is up for sale at the moment. Uh, that's on eBay. So potentially if that goes, may do a video on that. Um, not sure at the moment. I've got too many things going on, I think. <laughs>